Welcome to the channel. This is going to be a quick review of the 2019 XLT Sport Package F-150. If you walked into a dealership right now and wanted to pick one of these up, this is probably what you would be able to find. Uh, this is not a custom order truck or anything. This is just uh, purchased from a dealership, already stock, bought from the inventory. That's a good way to get a good deal on one of these. So this is a truck that you are likely to see on a dealership lot. Uh, regardless of uh, where you're located so it's a 2019 XLT sport package comes with the blacked out rims it's a different rim from the standard uh, XLT uh, different tires you get hand cooked tires uh, you also get your red lettering here where it says XLT uh, with the sport package again with the sport package you get darked out headlights it has a darker inlay here behind the lens gives it a nice uh, aggressive look and you also get the honeycomb grill which is one of my favorite features with the sport package just a better more aggressive look uh, I like you know this package for that reason but you could also get this with the STX package but the sport package gives you a little bit more you also get the graphics down the side here on the side of the truck and you get graphics on the um, hood here so looking at the sport package uh, this is what we decided to go with you got to be careful because I think some of the lighter colors the contrast is a little bit too much for example silver silver then you shoot right to black I'm not a huge fan of that I don't think that's as clean as a look but with the black on black I think it looks really good uh, comment below what you think we went with the five and a half foot bed uh, six foot bed will toll a little more and everything but the shorter wheelbase is easier to turn and maneuver and this is going to be for for my wife so uh this is a good setup for her uh in 2019 the rear window is not standard in the 302 way package but a lot of dealerships are still ordering them with the rear windows uh you don't have leds but you still have box lighting. This particular truck does not have the uh, box link system. So tying things down is going to be interesting. Uh, we'll have to figure something out. But you still get the box link. Or you still get the lighting, not the box link. You get box lighting. Uh, over here in the rear of the truck, uh, 2019 F-150. Uh, it comes with the 400 watt inverter. Uh, most of these trucks are going to come with the 400 watt inverter unless you step down to like an STX or something or an XL then that might have to be an added feature but generally speaking if you go to to a Ford dealership you're gonna find that most trucks have a 400 watt inverter unless you're getting down to the XL trim packages uh, power windows obviously uh, get your full flat floor um, this is new in 19 this strap has moved it used to be a little uh, switch here but now it's here for lowering the seat crew cab uh, the reason we went for an f-150 this year uh, we really wanted to be expedition but we only have one kid and it's on the same uh, platform as an expedition so you still get tons of room and if we ever need more space we can upgrade to something like that but you know there's not a lot of vehicles with this much rear seat room and like I said we just had a kid the car seat back here is really hard to get the driver's seat in a, or the passenger seat in a good position for me I like the seat pretty far back and we had an edge and my seat was always hitting the car seat so now that we have a crew cab F-150 for the wife I can now be on the passenger side and my seat's not hitting his car seat when he's in here so it works out real nice but uh, with the sport package you get the red striped um, seat belts which is nice you get the sport stitched uh, seats and the red stitching I think down the road this will be a more valuable truck just because of that sport package it's one of those little little uh, things not a whole lot it doesn't add any power or anything but it's just a trim just trim pieces which is nice if you're into that you get a different seat you know as well you get like a different pattern here which is cool uh, the quality seats are really comfortable in my opinion uh, leather seats aren't even more they're not really more comfortable so cloth seats 
I would have to kind of argue that cloth seats might be more comfortable than the, than the leather seats. There's less going on. There's no cooled seating or anything. Uh, but getting in the rear, you can see that there's tons of room. Uh, the seat is set up for me in the front and I like to see it pretty far back there's maybe another inch that it could come back but there's plenty of room back here uh, tons of power outlets USBs back here cigarette lighter vents in the rear which is nice uh, tons of room uh, window opens up back here so Pretty happy with the back seat. I think we made a good choice just for our family. We have tons of room now for uh, hauling everything that we need to haul. We have only have one kid, but uh, I could fit in here and two other people plus, you know, obviously the kid. So works out real good. Uh, moving on to the front, let's take a look at what is going on up there. Uh, oh, we also get that keypad so you can get inside the truck without the key. You ever want to lock the keys inside of the truck all right so the cluster is unique to the sport package it has sport written inside uh stitching red stitching here on the boot red stitching here uh red stitching in the seats different seat pattern with the sport and there's a lot more black in here than you would normally see all this would normally be gray it's all black in this truck um more blacked out theme going going along here definitely a good trim uh, we got the sync 3 in this particular truck and uh, it also has a really cool feature the Ford pass is also included on this truck and depends on the dealership our particular dealership orders most of their trucks with Ford pass because it's such a good feature but um, let's take a look here at how it works uh huh. So you just open up the app and we have all our vehicles in here. Okay, so I need to finish activating this. It's telling me I need to start the vehicle and accept the confirmation on touchscreen to gain access, which I haven't done that yet. So let's see. Um, but yeah, like I said, it has the sport package. Things look a little different on the odometer, different lettering. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and allow that so that now it works, but we have a, you know, a nice system here, uh, sync three, which is pretty good. It's got a few minor, minor issues, a little bit of length to see when you're doing Bluetooth video, but aside from that, it's pretty good. Uh, it's got nav, which is great to have. Um, it shows you maps and it shows you traffic, which is really good. I really use the traffic feature a whole lot. Um, you know, the audio in this sounds good. The audio in these trucks, let's go ahead and continue there. The audio in these trucks have gotten to be a lot better, even in the XL trims without the premium Bang & Olsen sound system. Because you got your tweeters here, you got some kind of speaker here in the center, you got your larger door speakers. As long as you've got a crew cab, your audio is going to be pretty good. Yeah, the Bang & Olsen sounds better because it's got a subwoofer, but you don't need it. And it sounds pretty good without it. So overall happy with the uh, sound of the uh, stereo. Uh, the engine on this particular truck is the 2.7 liter EcoBoost. And it's performed great. Uh, it's a good engine. It has tons of power. And it's a no compromise option. It's considered the lowest. You can go lower and get the 3.3. Not a whole lot of people order that engine. But the 2.7 is going to be on the lower end. But unlike the competitors, you don't have a big compromise when you go with the 2.7. You still have one of the faster trucks on the market. And, you know, it doesn't have the torque. I mean, it has a good amount of torque. Don't get me wrong. It has 400 foot-pounds of torque and 325 horsepower in 2019. But it doesn't have anything like the 6.2 that's in the GMC the, or the high-level GMC. And it doesn't have torque like the 3.5 EcoBoost. But it revs a little higher than a 3.5 EcoBoost. And it makes its peak torque a little bit higher. Whereas the 3.5 EcoBoost makes a ton more torque, but it's at a lower RPM. Which is great for towing. And it is a little quicker, but not much because it's it kind of just, it doesn't rev up as high, in my opinion, it seems like. So 
yeah, it's a little quicker, but you still get great speed out of the 2.7, and it's not a whole lot of compromises unless you need all that extra towing power. It's kind of better to go for the 2.7 EcoBoost, but you know, the 2.7 is a good engine because it's only 2.7 liters, and if you do a lot of idling, you're not burning a whole lot of gas doing idling. The MPG rating for this truck is 19 in the city and 24 on the highway, and that's insane. And I can tell you that it really does get that mileage if you uh, drive appropriately. If you have a lead foot, you're not going to get it. But if you drive, you know, like normal flow of traffic, you're going to get that mileage and it's going to do pretty good. Uh, another thing that's new for, it was new in 18, but it's a pretty good feature if you are concerned about mileage, is the use of the eco mode now. Eco mode helps out a whole lot because it cuts turbo power a whole lot i'm not gonna put in eco mode right now i'm actually gonna uh skip past eco and put it in sport so we can see what this thing can do but eco mode's real cool because it cuts the boost and one thing that's new about the 2019s well it started in 18 is the use of electronically controlled uh sensors a lot more of the sensors were made to be electronically controlled in 2018 and of course 2019 with the addition of the second generation 270 EcoBoost when they had a dual injection they also brought over more electronically controlled things like the turbos before were vacuum controlled but with the Gen 2 35 EcoBoost and the Gen 2 270 EcoBoost the turbos became electronically controlled and they pretty much eliminated all vacuum controlled computer systems with the uh, with the engine which is really cool because now it allows eco mode and it allows I would imagine it allows a little bit more tuning ability and things like that because now the computer has more precise control of the systems it has precise control electronically over the turbos and things like that so that you can now have an eco mode before you couldn't even have eco mode because it was all vacuum controlled that it would produce boost by the demands of the by the physical demands of the engine and you couldn't just program into the system an eco mode that cuts boost and it really allows you to even get better mileage than what the epa has uh rated the vehicle for so that's a cool feature uh just being able to cut your boost and if you really are concerned about mileage or if you're going somewhere far you can really just maximize your uh your mpg and the thing mpg is one of those things like a lot of people don't like to talk about it because it's not cool but at the end of the day if you're getting better mileage you're getting more range out of your vehicle and you can go further and that's a big feature it's not just about saving the earth or whatever anything like that but the idea that you can go farther in your vehicle on a tank of gas on a single tank of gas i mean what if you're traveling far on a road trip or something and that extra 20 30 miles can really add up you know what if you're driving cross country pretty good power puts it down real good now i do have a 3.5 EcoBoost for myself and my wife is going to be in this this is a 2.7 so i have experience on both engines now with the 2.7 it doesn't feel like it's scrambling for traction like the 3.5 does the 3.5 going through shifts it's breaking loose a little bit in the rear whereas this one it doesn't have the power just to, to constantly break loose in the rear and i'm definitely hitting a little more trash control with the 3.5 than i am with the 2.7 but it still is a really good platform and you know still really fast but i don't think it's going to be quicker than three set than my three five now the three five that i have might maybe lose in a race or something or whatever because that particular truck is a heavier model it has a moon roof it has a long wheelbase it has bigger wheels so it could be heavier it might not be faster because it's of covers because of its weight but um that but the engine for for when it comes to power the 35 definitely makes more does that equal more speed i don't know but it definitely equals more towing so if you need your truck for towing then the best bet would probably be the 35 uh but the 10 speed is 
included in every model except for the base engine the 3.3 liter and that's definitely a cool feature the transmission has been phenomenal in my 18 and i'm sure it's going to be great with the 27 and with the incredible mpg of the 27 you uh pretty much you can't hurt it by having a better transmission uh let's pull over here into this parking lot let's take a quick look at the engine Here at the Walgreens. All right. All right, so under the hood of the 2019 2.7 liter EcoBoost, one thing I noticed different is there's no engine cover on here like it was in 2015. I guess Ford decided to do away with that. Maybe they have it on the higher trim levels, but I'd imagine that it allows more heat to get out of the motor if you don't have that cover on there. But uh, if you look down in there, you can see the turbos down there. There's one and here is the other one. And what's really special about this is there's no exhaust manifolds. The, the, the manifolds are integrated into the uh, into the heads and the exhaust just come right out of the side of the mo motor. Which is really cool because the boost is closer to the engine and it's less lag that way. Uh, definitely a better way to do it. And also the exhaust manifolds are cooled. The exhaust manifolds being cooled means that uh, you have quicker warm-ups when you're when it's really cold out because all that extra heat makes the engine warm up, warm up quicker and gives you heat quicker inside of the vehicle and it pulls more heat away from the engine and allows for a little bit more power that's why you have so much horsepower and torque out of a such a small displacement engine it doesn't have any negative consequences because more heat is able to get out of the engine and that's why if you ever look at the spec sheets on the 2.7 liter EcoBoost you will notice that the 2.7 EcoBoost comes with the largest radiator capacity and the largest coolant capacity it has more coolant than the 5.0 and more coolant than 3.5 which is interesting I would imagine it's because it has integrated exhaust manifolds which would require more coolant capacity than those other engines which is weird is why didn't Ford just put the larger cooling capacity on all models but um all in all pretty cool uh another what are the other cool features on this engine I think the integrated exhaust manifold is the main benefit but in 2018 with the second gen EcoBoost you also have dual injection where you have port injection along with direct injection which is good it helped with adding that extra 25 foot pounds of torque that you got in 2018 which is obviously here in 19 as well uh, and the addition of all electronic plugs being on the engine the turbo wastegates are now electronic uh, and I think a few other things I can't know I can't remember off the top of my head what else was made electronic but the turbo wastegates was a big one which basically controls your boost it's now electronically controlled which in turn helps you create uh, more control over the engine potentially more power but more precise control in a sense that uh, you can now turn the turbos off you can turn the boost down computer now can cont control the boost and turn the boost down so that uh, you can get more power but a cool feature on all F-150s and pretty much all Fords is the way that their air intake pulls in cool air from outside as you see the air will go in through the grill here which is a huge honeycomb grill but the air goes in through the grill here and it goes right into this area here where it's all been built up when you see this it closes up against your hood so that hot engine air isn't going inside of your air air intake it's all fitted and it's all sealed up when you close the hood here as you see it's stamped out here and cool air goes down into the engine most Fords have this in some way uh, most newer Fords late model Fords have this in some kind of way the Super Duty my 19 Super Duty has it um, my my uh, obviously my, my other F-150 has it 
and that's a cool feature because you, you don't really need to upgrade your air intakes for more power because this is pretty much the most efficient system you can have on your F-150s right from the factory but anyway let's get back in here uh. comment below do you like the black on black look I think it looks really good uh, I'm almost wanting to turn in my 3.5 and get something like this I know it don't have the power like my 3.5 but I really enjoy the way the 2.7 EcoBoost drives and I really like the sport package it just looks really clean and it looks really quite nice in my opinion comment below and tell me what you guys think about this package and let me know if you think we made a good decision but anyway let's get back in and drive all right so this truck is equipped with auto start stop so I'm gonna go ahead and put the truck back into normal driving mode so auto start stop actually works make sure no one's back there and you know auto start stop is one of those controversial things a lot of people don't like it you see it online a lot of people are posting videos and content about how to turn auto start stop off I'm one of the few people who don't have a huge problem with auto start stop it doesn't bother me it saves fuel and it kind of makes sense to turn off the engine when you're not doing anything and it makes sense I think it's a cool feature to just use your batteries more because your batteries I mean they're always charging it makes sense to just run off the battery run all your accessories off your battery and go ahead and do it that way now some of the complaints have been well your air your AC is obviously not gonna pump ice cold AC it's gonna turn off the compressor because the engine's not running but it doesn't get hot again that fast so it's not that big a deal in my opinion um, my 2015 F-150 that I had had the auto start stop system but it had the 6 speed transmission and it had the first gen EcoBoost and it was not as smooth as it is now on my 18 or on this one you can't really tell that it does it it just does it seamlessly so I will say that it's definitely been refined a lot more since the addition of it you can turn it off but it really does help your 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 mpg and i know a lot of people think it don't make a big difference but the reality of the situation is when you're calculating your mpg you're basically doing a math equation with your gallons used and when you're stopped at a stop sign and your engine's idling it's true that you're not using a lot of fuel just to idle but you're going absolutely nowhere so you're using some fuel to idle the engine but you're gaining zero miles forward so you're killing your mpg because you're essentially doing the math equation with a lot of zeros for miles traveled because you're not traveling anywhere so it hurts overall mpg by turning off you could be coasting going like getting like 25 miles to the gallon in this truck in this full-size pickup and then you could come to a stop sign and you could turn off the engine and still have great mpg it's not going to kill your mpg to turn for that the engine turned off so i think auto start stop is a great feature and i'm just one of the few that don't have an issue with it all right so we're here we're, we're stopped i'm going to turn on sport mode uh, and we'll see how it drives so I was already up to speed and I put the four, foot down a little bit not all the way to the floor but I could feel it lose traction a little bit there it definitely revs a lot more than 3.5 and I was surprised when I first got my 3.5 because so it's coming from a 2.7 and it revved it didn't rev as much, but back in the 27, it is revving a lot more. It's not a big deal. It's a really smooth engine, but it just makes power a little bit higher RPM than uh, than the 35 does. Still a uh, great driving engine. Actually, I'm torn on what drives better. 
that three five just gives you a constant like whoosh of torque. But I'm not sure if they were side by side from a dead stop, if the three five would necessarily dominate the two seven in speed. It's a tough question. I have to uh, put both trucks next to each other, hire hire some drivers, and go to Mexico and see what the three five versus two seven would be like. But you know, if you're like me, I like to put the truck in sport mode quite a lot. Put you back in the seat a little bit. Pretty quick. Not bad. Can't go over the speed limit, though. Uh, if you're like me and like to put the vehicle in sport mode most of the time, you will uh, notice that the start-stop turns off if it does bother you. But there's ways around it if it really is an issue. In my opinion, it's not it's not an issue at all. Uh, and also, too, the way it performs right now is it's not broken in. It only has 26 miles on it. Uh, so it's definitely not broken in yet. I think it's going to get a little better. I think the last 27 that I have felt a little bit quicker. But it's only at 25 miles. I think 27s, I think they really do break in for like the first... Uh, Five six hundred miles before they start to feel 100% uh, power, but uh, maybe that's a myth. I don't know. Comment below. Do you, do your vehicles feel full power? Do you feel like they have full power when you first get them? Uh, I think the two seven has a little bit of a break in period there, uh, but I don't know if it affects power or not. All right, back home, and I want to make sure I covered everything. Uh, with this new package uh, so we have our sync 3 uh, with navigation and you can also do some things with some apps here you can also do Android Auto which is not in my opinion it's not better than sync 3 I'd rather just run sync 3 over Android Auto uh, being a new Ford from uh, dealership you get highway and the uh, satellite radio whatever for uh, a couple of months but I'm sure once that free subscription is over, we're probably going to go ahead and cancel that. It's just not better than regular radio, in my opinion. Uh, you get your 400-watt inverter up here, 110 volts, and uh, another power outlet there. You get your center-mounted shifter, which is nice. More USBs up in here, two more. Uh, sadly, no USB-Cs, but... I'm sure with the next couple years, Ford's going to be adding that. This does not have a trailer towing package specifically, so you don't have a trailer brake or the little knob for Pro Trailer Backup Assist. You get two cup holders, a little slot here for storage. Super Duties have uh, four cup holders, but you get a column shifter. But in the 150, you get your one shifter there. Center console is huge. Um, you can put a lot of stuff in there tons of storage <clears throat> the cab size is also big if you're in an older truck from like 06 or whatever if you're in something before 2005 <coughs> when this new body style started then you probably aren't used to this big of an interior the center console is extremely wide so you're spaced out from your passenger and it's nice just to have that extra space in the large cab. Uh, steering wheel controls, you get voice activated. Uh, navigation, which in my opinion, I think they can do a little better with the programming of that. It'd be cool if the programming of the voice activated button would just do the voice activation through your phone. I think that'd be a great improvement because there's not a whole lot you can do. Some people use it and say it works great, but for me, it's just after using voice activation on the phone, being able to ask your phone anything or Alexa anything, it's hard for me to use this. But a lot of people use it. Uh, you got your cruise controls here on the steering wheel, volume controls, uh, pretty much everything you need. Automatic windows, one button up, one button down on all four power mirror power mirrors but not power folding uh you have to step up and add that different to a uh, truck to, in order to get that uh it does not have the perimeter lighting either you know on on higher trim levels there's buttons here and there's lights on the mirrors um this button here will illuminate all the lights in the truck pretty cool uh nice to have 
little cubby here pretty simple I know this uh, interior is gotten to be a little bit dated uh, this IP this instrument panel is not the best in class for sure uh, I know Dodge and GM have new things but I still think the Ford even with that that's one caveat with the Ford it's not necessarily up to snuff with uh, the other brands Dodge is killing it with their instrument panel GM always had a good instrument panel as well and Ford the thing about the Ford instrument panel is it's really good it does everything really well it just doesn't have the original or, or the initial quality that the ram has the ram looks a little bit more impressive when you first get it but after you get past that the functionality of everything on here is really good uh the knobs are really well placed and it just functions really well and it doesn't look the best necessarily but it does look good and it does function really well and I think that's really important in the long run but with the instrument panel the ball is definitely in Ford's court and I think they're gonna crush the competition when they come out with the new one I think when it came out with this particular model back in 2015 I think it launched in 14 but it was the 15 model a lot of money was spent on the uh, the frame the frame of the truck it had an all-new frame it had new engines it had a aluminum cab and a lot was spent on that compared to just the IP it still has a good IP but it's not the most impressive to look at but it does function well and I think with the remodel coming up soon the ball is in forward squirt to just blow everybody out of the water with the IP and a lot of the instrument panels that have been coming out from Ford are really impressive when you see the uh, instrument panel in the Expedition it's pretty stunning and it's probably going to end up being best in class it looks really stunning and i think with the popularity of the f-series trucks they're going to see the uh best ips that money can buy so i'm looking forward to seeing what they come up with next but like i was saying it functions really well you don't really need to uh shy away from ford just because they don't have the best instrument panel everything is high quality it's just it just doesn't look as fancy um but anyway that's pretty much my review of the f-150 thank you for watching i want to show you guys the trucks in the fleet now this is our 19 f-150 302 way sport package let's get the key out of here and uh up front in there up there is my 2018 f-150 it's got three five eco boost max towing package twenty eighteen F one fifty Max towing package five oh two A trim. I didn't get the sport package on this one but I debated that back and forth a lot. Kinda wish I did but it's not sport package but it is still pretty high level high level stuff. I think it's locked. And my wife's new nineteen as we've been talking about this truck for the last uh few minutes and here is our work truck 2019 f-250 uh, I really enjoyed this truck as well it's got the 6.2 liter v8 with the six-speed transmission I like driving it a lot it's got heavy-duty axles and I really like how it drives with those axles 430 rear gears and everything but anyway subscribe to the channel if you like this kind of content we're gonna be posting a lot of videos on these trucks Hope to hear from you soon and have a great day. Bye.